You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. This is the No Doubt About It podcast. No doubt about it. Now your hosts, Christy and Mark Runcetti. Well, we have uh, sprung forward. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's a little... Yeah, I'm a little, uh, a little, little wiped out here. Yeah, well, you lose a little, you lose an hour, and it's not so easy just to, to gain it back. It turns out. Yeah, no, especially <laughs> At least not, not this morning. It isn't. <laughs> yeah, we're recording this actually on Sunday. Yeah. Um, for Monday's release, so we're just now trying to catch up a, a little bit. So I love that the girls are so out of uh, whack on the weekends as far as their sleep. I go to tell Ella like, "Hey, just so you know, we sprung forward," and she was oblivious. Yeah, like that's so a treat. Ava. That's yeah. a treat right there. Yeah. I shouldn't have said anything. They would have never known. No, true. Yeah. Anyway. True. Yeah. Okay. So it is. And, and, and actually, when we were kids, the spring forward was huge. I mean, it was huge. When you got that extra day or that extra hour of daylight in the evening, it was so great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was just. You it, lose an hour of sleep, but you get extra daylight. And yeah. I love the daylight. So oh, who doesn't, right? Yeah. And then and then everybody was all worried about, you know, could you recover after that, that the change in the hour? And it's like. Now, no one even notices because our phones change automatically. So the only thing that doesn't change is the oven in the kitchen where you're like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, it turns out we, we sprung ahead. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it used to be a big deal. It's nothing now. Well, I'll say this is when it was a big deal was when the girls were little because when they had their sleep schedule. Yeah. That was brutal. I remember I would do it in 15 minute increments when they were tiny, 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 where I would start the change before the change happened. Right. Because it was tough. Eh, losing eh. losing an hour of sleep when they are like two and three, it's a big deal. It's a bit of an issue. Anyway. Okay. okay. What do we got? So lots of comments coming in. But before we get to the comments, I well, one of the comments, um, actually multiple comments. We got a lot of emails this week. And a lot of the emails, people seem to think that you're running for office, which is mm. very interesting. Because we're actually sending out the emails to, to talk about our show. And people are saying, Mark, we're on your team. We'll, we'll fully yes. support you. Um, so w- what can we do to show your support? So while we appreciate that support, for sure, he is not currently running for any office. However, there are ways you can show your support. And there's a few ways you can do that. You can go to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. It is free. We get that question a lot. It's free. Just hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. It does a a lot for us because what happens is that bumps you up in an algorithm and it helps more viewers get to see our content. It also helps us bring more guests to you guys. Another simple way you could do this is if you're listening on Apple podcast platform, just go and get a five-star rating for us because even one of those reviews helps bump us up as well as Spotify. Now Spotify, you do have to listen to a little bit of the show before you can rate us, but we'd appreciate a five-star review there too. So anyway, those are the ways you can help out. You can also go to our website and we have some merchandise for sale and you can make a donation to the podcast to keep us running uh, full steam ahead if you'd yes. like to. So those are all available on our website, um, which is no doubt about it. Podcast.com. Yes. I very that. good. Okay. Okay. So can I get into this? This I cannot believe, but we got a lot of talk about the energy section that yeah. we did. That was a very popular show. Yeah. You nerd right. it out. You, yeah. you have fellow nerds that like to listen to that. Yeah. Larry Barron's came on for yeah. Power of the Future. We talked about uh, the importance of the massive energy needs we're going to have. Right. And we got some emails on it. Yeah, we got this one. This one came in from Frequency Modulator, and he said, we do need to talk more about nuclear energy. Thanks to Mark for having a segment on it. This isn't the Chernobyl era of past with dangerous meltdowns. It's a way safer now and way more advanced. Interesting for sure and probably the most clean form of energy we have. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be a huge part of the discussion going forward. And the new, or sorry, the Washington Post rather did an interesting article this past week talking about the fact that we have massive energy needs exploding here over the over the next you know decade. They're going to be huge. It's already happening right now. And part of it we talked about the last episode was AI. Well, look at the energy. They put out one graph which is really interesting here. The energy requirements for the country over the past five years have basically doubled, which is crazy, right? Because it's not like our population has doubled, but our energy needs have doubled. So look at this graph, and and it's amazing. And if you're listening, we'll just talk you through it here. 2017, this is the nine-year growth forecast of demand for new electricity in gigawatt hours. And so in 2017, we had a need for about 261,000 gigawatt hours okay and it goes all the way up and continues to climb and climb look where we are in 2023 there's been a massive jump 
between 2022 and 2023, we're likely to be at around 564,000 gigawatt hours. This is unbelievable. And this is going to continue to explode. So that's why I want to talk about nuclear along with oil, gas, and, and renewables as well. But for anybody who tells you, oh yeah, just throw up some solar panels or, you know, hey, let's fire up a wind farm. Those aren't even close. I mean, that's just not even going to be close to what we need. We're, our, our demand is going to be so much higher than that. We have to have serious conversations about what we can do to get more out of the oil and gas industry, and to expand the nuclear industry in a huge way because we have no choice. Anyone who's not talking about all of those things at once, knowing we're going to need every single one of them, is doing a disservice and is not being honest or just has no clue about what kind of load we're going to have electri electricity-wise. So just something to think about. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like you are running for office right now because this was very similar to your campaign speech, which is very important well, to be able to talk. I'm not running for office. I know. So, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I think it's a huge deal. No, I really I do. Think it's, it's good. I think we got to get more people engaged state. in it yeah, and, and interesting in the talk. Okay, so here's another email we got in from Renee Peralta. She said, I love you all. I don't agree with everything you say, but it's a breath of fresh air. I wish this pod podcast could be on a loudspeaker all over New Mexico so they can hear the truth of what's going on in our state. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, cool. Renee. We appreciate it. And then um, when we were talking about um, uh, this clean gas fuel, clean fuel bill that's yep, been passed, yep. okay? And it's going to increase our gas uh, pricing, yep, right? Right. So uh, uh, New Mexico Gran, she wrote in, hey, can uh, we get a list of those politicians that approved the 50 cents gallon tax? Okay, so... I like to educate a little bit on this show if we can. So there's a very simple way you can do this. You can do this in any state. So even if you're listening to us from a different state and you want to know how your state legislators voted on an issue, go to a site called legiscan.com, L-E-G-I scan.com. And what you can do in there slash is... Slash NM if you want oh, New Mexico. Yeah, slash NM if you want New Mexico. But it yep. will also give you a prompt to put in whatever state you want to search. Yep. Go over to the left-hand side of this column. Ava's going to follow along with us a little bit. And this particular bill was called HB 41. Now, if you don't know the number of the bill, Google what some some of the top uh, topics of the bill that you know you're trying to look up. It'll tell you the bill number in your state. So put an HB 41 in that bill number, click on it, and then if you if you just come over, you'll see the name of your bill, which it says it right here. And then if and you go down to roll call, okay, it shows you the Senate and the House in roll call. Click on one of those. Actually, Ava, click on the House because the House was much closer on this bill. Yeah. And it's interesting in New Mexico now, there's a contingency, just so you know how this stuff works. The Senate used to be uh, much more of the moderate body in New Mexico. Now it's the House of Representatives. You have seven or eight uh, Democrats in the House of Representatives that, that are moderate Democrats that, that can go either way on an issue and they address each issue and, and, and they vote accordingly, which is what they should do, right? right? And so you still have a far left contingent in the House. It's enough to get it through, but it's much closer. So this, as you look at this. Yeah, pull it back, back up, Ava. Yeah, go back up. So and if you scroll down, though, you'll see the reason I like this website, Mark, over the ones that are for just state only, is these actually show you not only the name of the um, the legislator and their district. It shows you what party they're part of. And I just think that's kind of interesting to see, like, how many Democrats voted in favor of this or voted against it. Yeah. And same goes for the Republican office. So this is a really quick cheat sheet that gives you a overview of any bill you're interested in and how it got voted on. So again, it's legiscan.com yep. and then slash New Mexico if you want New Mexico. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that helps out. And thanks for writing in New Mexico, Gran. Um, we appreciate it. And so. the state of New Mexico actually has one as well. So if you right. want to go, the state does provide this information as well. You can go in it there It does. Too. It just does not show you what party they're part of. And so if you yeah. care about that, then go to this one. If you don't care about that one, go to the state one. Cool. No, okay. it's it's interesting. No doubt. All right. So we want to talk about, I, I think we got confirmation today mm -hmm. about something that all of us have known for a long time. And that is, this is a rough state to drive in. And Albuquerque in particular is a brutal city to drive in. This is the headline in the journal today. Does Albuquerque have the worst drivers in the country? And, and the journal puts a question mark on it. Well, the source of this does not put a question mark on it. It's very clear that we do have some of the worst drivers in the country, and we were rated the worst city to drive in in the country, and the numbers on this are uh, rough, no doubt. Albuquerque has the highest number of fatal car accidents involving a distracted driver. Okay, We're number three in total number of fatal car accidents. Albuquerque reports the third highest number of people killed in fatal crashes. We're fifth in 
Number of fatal accidents involving speeding. Shocking. Yeah. And then Albuquerque is also the sixth highest, the number of fatal accidents involving a drunk driver. And this is, just so you know, the source for this is National Highway Traffic Safety Admission. Yeah. Um, and Administration, yeah. Yeah. And let's just uh, be honest here. The kids get mad at me because I'm such a helicopter parent when it yeah. comes to driving. We've taught both the girls how to drive um, in this last year. It's been an absolute... Um, heart attack for me. I'm not great at that situation at all. Well, I don't know why, because when you look at some of the highlights, it's unbelievable (laughs) when you see what happens here. I mean, this, I can't even watch this video. This video is coming in from, um, uh, it's a video. It's the hotspot underscore Albuquerque, uh, Johnny Chandler and these guys do a really good job of aggregating this stuff. Okay. It scares you to death. It's just a clip of all the wrecks and the reckless driving we have. The girls, I track them on Life 360, an app that you can track your kids on. Yeah. And the girls think I'm insane because I'm like, you're not driving on I-40. Yeah. I need to know if you're going to be on I-25. If there's an alternate route, I'm putting you on that. And make sure you don't speed. Like, I'm a yeah. nervous wreck because when I grew up driving, obviously, I, drew, I grew up in a city that was more of a town. Yeah. So we didn't have highway driving very yeah. much. And so it was just a little bit more controlled. The speed here is really, to me, what's absolutely frightening and how many people run through stop signs. We have a four-way stop sign right next to our house yeah. that's right next to a high school. Yeah. People just blast right through that thing all the time. Like it's a suggestion. It's not actually <laughs> well, a, no, a rule that they should follow. No, so. it's, it's an interesting point. And I think when you look at what's going on here, you see a few things. The other cities that were involved in this and, and that were in the bottom five, I guess you'd say, Memphis, Tennessee, Detroit, Michigan, Tucson, Arizona, and Kansas City, Missouri. All right, to give you an idea. And here's the thing about being number one in fatalities, all right? So assuming, you know, you look at all these numbers, I think part of the reason we're number one, and when you look at the broader of the broader scheme of all of this, this gets back to when we talk about things being lawless. And I think that's one of the concerns, because I think for a long time in the city of Albuquerque, because of what's gone on with crime, it has been such a... A, a, an afterthought to look at crime and, and look at what happens inside a car because because police officers are going to violent crime and issues like that. So as things spin out of control and things get more and more violent in the city of Albuquerque, I think what's happened is enforcement of what happens on the roads takes a back seat. And so you see these things explode. And, and so this is a result of a lawless situation here that has to be brought back under control. So this is kind of gets back to what happened in New York City in the 80s and early 90s, right? There were so many other crime <clears throat> issues and things like that 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 they weren't dealing with these issues. And then Rudy Giuliani comes in and says, no, no, no. You got to deal with the little stuff like you deal with the big stuff. And I think eventually Albuquerque has to have that same mindset because if you don't, this will continue to spin out of control. Yeah. I mean, and it's, uh, it's just every – parents nightmare i have to say like i i would love for them not to have to drive anywhere so oh, it just scares me up. okay speaking of chaos crime out of control kind of situation um there's an article that came out this past week in the albuquerque journal um about an illegal immigrant who was involved in a shootout right off of academy in a series of in a nice area of town in a nice apartment area and it happened in the middle of the morning. I mean, it's just insane. So if you go into the story, his name was Francisco Hernandez. And he had an altercation along the highway. He's pulled over um, with Sandia Pueblo police. Yeah. And basically, they pull this guy into the window. Okay? They pull him in. They start punching this officer in the face. He Then they take off driving. Yeah. His lapel camera falls off. He falls out of the car. Right. Okay? So he falls back onto the highway. He has to go to the, emer- or go to the hospital. So uh, state police take over, okay? Yeah. They ensue this guy. They hear his recordings because he's he's got that lapel camera in his lap while he's driving down the road. So wait, the perp basically is carrying the lapel camera. Correct. And they're listening into this Correct. guy. Correct. And, they, and they're tracking him this way. And he's talking about, I can't believe I gave the officer my real name. Um, I'm going to find somebody else to go to jail on my behalf. Like just planning the whole thing out, yeah. right? Well, anyway, it ends up getting down into the um, northeast area of Albuquerque in the pavilion apartments. Yeah, off the, of uh, uh, Academy. State police now are chasing this perpetrator in down the road of Academy. With the cam. The cam is inside the car. Yeah. His car. The, the criminal has the camera, okay? <laughs> and he's talking the whole time. Okay. Some, I don't know what happens. He hits a tree, okay? okay. Crashes the car into a tree. He gets yep. out and starts running on foot. And the two officers chase after him and end up shooting and killing him in the parking lot of this very nice apartment complex off of Academy, okay? Mm-hmm. But 
that's not the worst of it. Okay. Okay. This guy has been arrested multiple times starting in 2011. Jeez. And here's the, here's the real big stinger. He's here illegally from Mexico. Mm -hmm. He's been deported multiple times. Okay. So he's been arrested, let go, like deported. He comes back in a couple of months. He does another crime and they're serious crimes, right. robberies. I mean, assault, all kinds of things. So what they did with him, it sounds like is they would basically forego charging him here to send him back to Mexico. And he comes back immediately within a couple of months. So why not charge him here, put him in jail? Right. Well, it, it says in the it says in the article that in 2022 he was sentenced to seven or eight months in prison. Does not say if he served that time because that was in 2022, yeah. and now we're at, we're in 2024. So even if he was, I and I'm sorry, if you go to prison here, do you get to stay when you get out? Well, no, 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 no. They'll you, yeah, you'll go into prison and then you'll come out and then they'll and they'll send you back. But he just turns right back around and comes back yeah. in. I mean, we just it's like a it's just an open revolving door yeah. here. So. What a scary situation for these officers, and plus a shootout at 11.30 in the morning in a very popular area, like very a lot of people mulling about, probably lots of people driving, and this guy is driving recklessly through the streets of Albuquerque and then smashes into a tree. This is why sanctuary cities, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinions, have to end. They have to end. Like, how, how many more people are we going to have to injure or get hurt? I mean, this guy robbed people in Rio Rancho. He's been involved in home invasions. Come on, like have have a notification of this guy coming across and have big red flags that say this guy can never come back in. And it's one of the things we learned when we went down to the El Paso <laughs> sector of the border a few months ago. And we asked the guys on the border who, who looked everybody over and who looked over their rap sheets. And they said, you would be shocked if you knew some of the people that were coming into this country. And so this is that broader issue of every American should be concerned to the fact that we have not taken care of our borders and we're starting to see it happen more and more and more, which is people that should not be in this country are committing violent crime. And so that's what has to stop here. And this should not be a partisan issue. But in fact, in the State of the Union, which we just fa finished watching here, it, this is becoming the biggest issue in the race. Now, we'll get into how cynical President Biden's approach in all of this is, but it is definitely something that is starting to take over now. So if you watch some of the media coverage on this, you would think this was an amazing uh, address. Of course, of course. This is right up there with the Gettysburg Address. The CNN <laughs> was like, wait a minute, six in 10 people, I love the State of the Union. Well, because he actually, you know, didn't fall down on the ground during the speech. Well, they have done so an amazing job. Congratulations. So now he's like this, it's an amazing speech. Well, in, in NBC, of course, dutifully jumped right in line. And, and their Shocking. headline for this was State of the Union 2024 highlights Biden talks Trump democracy and of course abortion in an energetic speech. Energetic, okay. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if Joe Biden, you know, screaming at the sunset is energetic, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. That, that's fine. But you, you wonder why people and you say, well, you know, what's going on? Who's going to support Joe Biden? How could you possibly do this? Uh, well, listen to what some of the media says. And, and Joe Scarborough, former Republican congressman, who is obviously getting trading, paid well, to he, switch sides. It's unreal to, to watch what he does. And, and he is he gaslights to a level. I, I can't even know how he does it with a straight face. But just listen to what, what Joe Scarborough said about this amazing address by Joe Biden. What's your take? Well, I mean, had a pulse. He had Frazier's yeah. left hook. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm I have joking. never seen. And, and part of this is delivery. Part of it is speech writing. Part of it is setting up the argument for the fall. I've, I've sat through a lot of these. Uh, and I have never seen one side put in so many uncomfortable positions as the Republicans were last night because they were on the wrong side of history. They were on the wrong side of the polls. They were on the wrong side of politics. Mm -hmm. They were on the wrong side of decency. Okay. This was this was a tour de force uh, by Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm sorry, comparing <laughs> Biden to <laughs> Frazier's right hook? And then a tour de force. This guy, I mean, honestly, the most charitable reading of this speech is the guy made it through. He did a lot of yelling, a lot of stumbling, a lot of bumbling, but he did okay. And it like that that's a real assessment because the bar is so low now. Yeah. Right? And, and then Joe Scarborough just saying this is a tour de force is a clown show comment. 
I mean, you just sit there and look at him and go, are, are you serious? Like at a certain point, it's like when someone sells you a car and you know you're buying a car that's not great. You get it. But they're like, no, 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 no. Trust me. This is the best car I've ever sold. And you're like, you're a liar. And so it just, well, and I, that's what he comes off as. Well, and he talks about how he goes to dinner with Joe. I mean, with Joe Biden and stuff. He, this guy is just wrapped around his little finger for power purposes or right. whatever, or paycheck. I don't even know anymore. But I'm sorry, that speech was a campaign speech. It was not a State of the Union. Right. And yeah, absolutely and, true. And the fact that people are like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. It's just like, are you, like, did you watch the same thing that we watched? But, you know, showing clips like this, Mark, I think are important because I think a lot of conservatives are like, who in the world is going to vote for Joe Biden? You're not watching the same content that um, liberals are watching for the most part. And when you see yeah, stuff like true. this, yep. you see why people like they're like, oh, well, Joe did great because yep, I didn't great. even see the speech. But the media said yeah. he did a great job. So he must have been on fire. And so you, you put that content out there enough and you gaslight people enough instead of actually reporting the facts of saying, hey, this speech was very unique in the fact that uh, – he, you know, he didn't bumble too much. Well, well no, but slurred. I disagree with that. So, so okay, and I, I, I totally agree with your point, but I disagree with that he didn't bumble too much. He bumbled everywhere. It's just that we've become numb to it. So, so that, so let me just give you an example. He, he goes in, he's talking about prescription drugs. Okay, so he's going to have this snazzy little line until he does what? He goes off script and walks himself into a wood chipper. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but if you want to get an Air Force woman and fly to Toronto, Berlin, Moscow, I mean, excuse me, and it, well, even Moscow, probably. <laughs> and bring your prescription with you, and I promise you, I'll get it for you for 40% the cost you're paying now. Same company, same drug, okay. same place. Uh, so sorry, he, what's he, he uh, talking about? Yeah, he, <laughs> he's going to Moscow to get his cheaper drugs? Yeah, right, right. And so he's like... He, he just, I mean, he doesn't, Moscow wasn't in the script, no. but he doesn't know. So he just throws out Moscow. Like anybody else had done that. Ronald Reagan says we should go to Moscow to get our drugs. Yeah. You know, that's what you'd be saying. George Bush says we should go to Moscow. Heck, Barack Obama says we should go. To, like nobody would do that. Right. right. But you just accept it now. You accept it with Biden because you're so used to various grease fires breaking out that you're like, well, that one didn't take out the whole kitchen. So yeah. it's pretty good. We only took out the drapes. I mean, and so he does this time and time again and we've just become so comfortable with the decline now that, that anything that isn't a total disaster you say okay all right well he's doing okay same thing with what happened with marjorie taylor green yeah and can i ask you is it common for hecklers in the in the uh it's got, state of the union like it's gotten it feels like a comedy show where people just show up in whatever costume they want to wear and then they just yell out things well from both uh, sides that started yeah and i think it got and it's war it's really started to ramp up during Obama. It happened a few times. He was called a liar during a speech. That started to happen. So the decorum in, in the chamber is going down. And we'll get to that in a minute. The specific examples of what's happened on that, it's bad. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think, makes a, a ridiculous mistake here, which is Joe Biden has the mic. So don't yell at him something because he gets to talk back at you and make his points, get an applause while you sit there and and, and have to eat it, basically. OK, so she starts screaming about Lake and Riley. OK, the, the poor girl who was who was killed by an, yeah, by an illegal immigrant uh, a couple of weeks ago in Georgia. Right. And, and Biden hadn't spoken a word about her until this point. So she gives Biden this pin when he's walking down and and he actually holds on to it. They knew this was coming. Biden knew this was coming. OK. And again, this was represented in the media like Biden torched her. Right. But let's just listen to this and, and you'll see. He didn't torture at all. He actually bumbled all over it and, and, and threw up all over himself again. But yet the way it was handled by Marjorie Taylor Greene, it didn't come out that way, especially when the media breaks it down. So here's what it sounded like. He's searching for the pin that she gave him. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, Lincoln. an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal that's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by legal? Okay, right there. Hold on. To so her hold parents, on. So, I pause it really quick. So he 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 says Lincoln Riley, first of all. Okay, now just so you know, Lincoln Riley is the head football coach at USC. That's who Lincoln Riley is. Okay? 
Uh, before that, he was at uh, Oklahoma. Okay. So that's Lincoln Riley. Okay, He's we digress, fine. though. He yeah. is fine. Lincoln Riley is fine. Okay. Lincoln Riley was the one who was killed. Right. Okay, so right out of the shoot, doesn't say the name right. And then number two, then he goes on some weird slurry thing about a thousand people killed by illegal limit. No idea what he's talking about. Right. Right. But then he gets this huge applause. Uh, okay, so the media covers it as if he's done something, you know, Amazing. fantastic here. Right. When realistically, he just ate it. Yeah. Okay, but yet again, we're just so used to this guy now doing this that anything short of a complete freeze up on screen and, and, is a and win. Is a win, mm -hmm. right? Is a win. And so now he gives that response. And the one thing he does well there is he tries to say her name, fails, but then says she was killed by an illegal immigrant. Okay, well, he's made a terrible mistake there. Right. And, but he didn't know he made a terrible mistake until after the fact. Then his party, their biggest problem isn't the fact that an innocent nursing student was killed by someone who shouldn't be in this country. And because we have an open border, these things are happening with increasing frequency. That's not the problem. The problem is how Biden referred to him as an illegal. And Biden had to go back and apologize to someone who is accused of murder. So this is what he did with Jonathan Capehart. But during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly <sighs> killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. Yeah. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look... When I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing, we have to control the border and, and more orderly flow. But I, I don't share his view at all. So you, you regret using that word? Yes. But, okay, uh, so he's backtracking and apologizing to someone accused of murder. Right. He then goes out and says that people coming here illegally crossing our border uh, built the country. Right, they're building our economy. That's yeah. what he said. This policy is cruel, right? And, the, and there are people who want to come to this country and, and, and live here and, and want the best for their families. There's no doubt those people exist. But the problem is you have untold thousands of other people that are waiting in line the right way. It's taking them forever to get into this country. So to sit there and, and say they, you know, I, I'm sorry for referring to people that way and they built the country and everything else and, and, and I won't disrespect anybody. Well, if you're going to disrespect somebody, you may want to disrespect somebody accused of murder. Right. And, and for all accounts, he's properly accused of murder. So this is just you just see this happen in it and it is incredibly disheartening to watch. Well, and Lake and Riley's parents aren't happy. Right. I mean, you can see this headline, Lake and Riley's mother slams Biden for fumbling murdered nursing students' name at State of the Union, calling him pathetic. Um, she's, you know, obviously, Biden, she says here in her quote, Biden does not even know my child's name. It's pathetic. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if yeah. you're going to actually talk about her, at least do have the common courtesy to do that. Well, and, no, and, and it's true. And it, it, this is what I mean. Like if anything that happens, that's not on the teleprompter and then, he's not ready, then, then it turns into a grease fire. But, but I think, so I, I want to get into something about the state of the union that to me was the most disheartening. And, and I think there's a broader theme I want to hit on here with a variety of a couple different things. First one is when Biden talks about the border, that it is incredibly I've I've never seen a politician be this patently dishonest trying to say I'm going to solve a problem that I intentionally created and, and that trust me I'm the guy to do this and, and so let just listen to a brief clip of what he said now that there was a Republican and, and Democrat border bill they were working on they were trying to do it didn't happen okay Joe Biden doesn't need a border bill he, he could absolutely use the tools that were given to him and that are already given to him as the chief executive to solve a lot of these border problems. Not that we don't need to address problems down the road, but he can more than solve this problem. But he stands up there and, and tries to make the case of why the arsonist should be the one to put out the fire. Listen to this. In November, my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? That conservatives got together and said it was a good bill? I'll be darned. That's amazing. Okay, so he goes and says, they've got this bill, right? 
he's so disingenuous because he completely created this crisis. I want to take you back, and we've, we've played a couple of these clips before, but I just want it to be crystal clear on, on how cynical and how dishonest that clip is. Because when Joe Biden was running for president, he said it himself. He said, I want a surge at the border with migrants. Listen to him. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. Okay, so we wonder why this has blown up. It's right there. And then he has the gall to stand up and say, I'm the one who's trying to solve this problem. I'm the one who's trying to deal with it. He's not. And then we talk about what President Trump did and what he put in place when Biden took office. Everything Biden needed was there for him when he took office. So what did they do? They ripped it all out. But Trump era immigration policies have been banned, ended, reversed. And if any investigations are underway by you. Uh, so we have rescinded so many uh, Trump immigration policies, it would take so much time to list them. Okay, thank you very much. And then what is the result been? Here is the graph again mm. on illegal crossings of the border since 2017, since when Trump took office to where Biden is. Okay, they have increased five to seven fold. So they have done this intentionally. And yet he sits up there and says this garbage at the State of the Union. And I just sat there. And I couldn't help but just be completely and totally deflated because now the truth doesn't even matter. And that's the part of this that kills me that, that we sit here and we listen to a president just completely cause a problem and then go back and say he's the one trying to solve it. Right. It's one thing to disagree on policy and you can say, I don't think he's representing things fairly. It's another to light the house on fire and then say, don't worry, I'm going to be the guy to put it out. Right. I, I just think also the, the the biggest issue I see in that situation is there's already laws in place. He doesn't need a bill from anybody. He just needs to put the, the laws that we actually have already voted on back in place. And, or executive orders. Yeah. Too. I mean, yeah. he can do it. I mean, he took them away with an executive order. He can certainly put them back. And to say that he needs all this back and forth with the House and making Republicans look bad or conservatives look bad in the process, the, the blame shifting, yeah. that's not a man of integrity. That's not a man of real leadership. It is just, it's, it, it makes me sick to my stomach. And it's like, we're yelling at the television. I don't know if anybody else out there was doing the same thing, but well, I was like, yeah. you, what is wrong with you? Like, if you stepped in it, when... Are we ever going to see a politician who steps in it actually say, "Stand up, I so, I yeah. messed up, I made yeah. the wrong call, yeah. and I need to shift things around"? Will we ever see that? I don't know. I don't on think any so. side. And, and one quick thing before we get to a couple of you're right though. I, I think you're exactly well. Right. And let's. I mean, I'm sorry. We have to read this Elon Musk tweet, okay. okay, or X or whatever you want to call it. Okay, he says Elon Musk said because I'm raising concerns about the flood of unvetted illegal immigrants overwhelming American cities, the press will often characterize me as anti-immigrant. As an immigrant myself, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm a very, I'm very much in favor of increased and expedited legal immigration. Anyone who is talented, hardworking, and honest. It is bizarrely difficult and agonizing, slow to immigrate immigrate to the U.S. Um, it just again, it's like let's trash talk somebody, let's make them into something, let's make them a hater um, when they don't a absolutely line up and, and back a policy that is failing America and making us a very unsafe country. Yeah. You have people that powerful people that are speaking out against it and they just want to trash you. And I just am thinking this is weak. This is, this is all election garbage yeah, and nobody's interested in it. It is. And, and I think, you know, I was hoping as we were watching this and Biden was finished, uh, Katie Britt was going to give the response for the Republicans. Oh, okay. And I literally, I called Ava over to the television set and cause I said, Ava, I think this is going to be really good. Okay. I think Katie Britt, who I, I like to, you know, yeah, to, you even said you thought maybe she could be a VP candidate. Yeah. I, Cause I, I've seen her on a couple of different occasions. She was really effective communicator. And so I was like, this could be very, very interesting. So I call Ava over to the TV and we start watching in abject horror to what unfolded. So just listen to this clip. I have imagined what my story would entail. 
to think about what the American dream can do across just one generation in just one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. I mean, okay, so the script itself was right on. Yeah, I don't think the script was bad. This overacting delivery of like her trying to be in a Lifetime movie or something. I don't know what it was. It was just, it was all acted. It was way over the top. And you cannot connect with voters if you're acting (laughs) things out. Yeah, it just, it makes you look like you're totally disingenuous. Just like this is so hard. Look away and be pensive. (laughs) And I'm back. And then you just go back. Well, to and like she's like going to cry. It's like she's getting ready to cry. Just, just like wait. be strong. Show us your strength. Talk about what's real. And, and trust me, you give that before you give that speech. You give it in front of 50 other people 50 times. You tweak it. They see it. You hear it. You know it. You know what's going on here. So there is a group of people. It's just not Katie Britt. It's got to be, obviously, her husband's involved, but more so than that, Senate leadership has to be involved. All of them have to know, what are we doing here? I mean, like, and was- this is why people think their representatives are full of it. it, because you're like, wait a minute. You see Biden lying like he's getting paid for it, and, and, and then you see you know, an Oscar worthy performance, although it's not an Oscar worthy performance. <laughs> no. Like if you're really good at delivery, you can't tell you're doing that, but she was awful. Well, and you told me that it was live. I thought they oh, had pre recorded it. No, and no, I was no, like, no. surely they could have reshot that thing and said, Hey, just be more yourself. No, no, no. Just talk you, from the you heart. You never would have gotten to that point. If, if she had people around her who knew what they were doing. Right. And I'm sorry, this is where you have to have someone do that job, whatever it is, whether you're a senator, you don't, it can be a governor, it can be a member of the House, it can be whoever. Okay. There are plenty of decent communicators. And I actually thought Katie Britt was one of them, quite frankly. Well, and I still be. think she, she is. She might be. This I do just still wasn't think her. she is. But this sets her back a long ways because it was just brutal. <laughs> so, so this is all on my thread of, of disappointments, right? right? And I'm right. all, okay. So then, as we're, we're, we see this, and then even going back to watching this event, you look Ugh. into the crowd, right? which is members of the House and Senate are sitting there for the State of the Union, and some of what you saw was straight up Star Wars bar, bar action. And I'm, I'm just sick and tired of looking at our representatives and thinking, what kind of ridiculous, floppy-shoed, red-nosed clown show are we watching? Look at this. We've got, we got the Hamas contingent. They're fired up. Yeah. Right, they they they, so they the, they've so called for signs. the they've called for the end of Israel. They're holding up signs yep. against their own president, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's got to make America great again. Hat on. She looks like a clown out there. Okay, and she's screaming during the middle of his speech. Right, which is ridiculous. And then there's Troy Nels. He gets out there. He's got Trump's mugshot on his shirt with a stupid looking stripper bow tie. Yeah, and then. This representative, Catherine Clark from Massachusetts, has an abortion button on with a heart in the middle of it. I, I get it. There are people we're going to disagree on abortion. OK, but but turning abortion into, oh, let's lionize abortion. Yeah. Let's put a heart in there. What is wrong with these people? I'm actually embarrassed that I wanted to be a member of that group. It's pathetic. The country deserves better. And I can't even watch it anymore. Well, and and I'm sorry, but going back to that abortion heart thing, is it because we're going to kill a heart? We're going to kill a beating heart? Like, who decided let's have the heart be the equation to abortion? Because it's do exactly the opposite of, w- of what you're doing, right? It, it, it is Like, let's so show that cynic- we're compassionate and it's we're so, actually not. I mean, I just so don't get it. It's so cynical. It's awful. It's dark. It's very, it's just a dark, it's, a, it's dark. Yeah, that woman, that is like straight out of a ghoul's handbook. It's yeah. awful. And so you just stick them all together. Biden causes the border problem and then says he's the only person solving it. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Troy Nels wear ridiculous costumes and start screaming out like fools. You've got the Hamas contingent wanting the end of Israel. And then you've got this woman glorifying abortion by wearing her pin and not acting like it is a very serious issue, but yet something you can wave the pom-poms for. 
it just shows you where we are now. And I'm so bummed out over it. Yeah. I would love, I would love to see real people step back in to this, these yeah. positions yeah, that's right. and take it as seriously as you need to be taking it because you're, you're running our government. Like, I don't know how anybody doesn't see this or doesn't take this more seriously. And it becomes about them and about how much limelight they can get personally, yeah, I think. I agree. And then what what kind of activist move can I pull when I'm sitting in in a major forum yeah. with yep. cameras everywhere? That's right. It's the AOC ofization of what all this is. It's it's awful. Yeah, it, it is it's embarrassing. Okay, so a couple more quick things before we go. Um, one, the uh, the <laughs> the the ad season is out. Okay, so the, the campaign. Wait, wait, wait. Start- Before you show the campaign thing, you do have to show the clip of him in Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah. So, all right. All right. No, that's fair. I know you're trying to so, trim time, but people have got to see this okay, clip. Okay, so right after the State of the Union. Oh, incredible State of the Union. Yeah. All right, right? He's amazing. amazing. He's amazing. amazing. On Thursday night. Friday, he goes to Pennsylvania to give a speech. Right. This is clip okay? 19, Ella. We've all I mean, made Ella. A, We've all made a terrible mistake because we. I, I thought he was running for president. It turns out Joe has changed... His office of choice. He's no longer running for president. Listen to this. Pennsylvania, I have a message for you. Send me to Congress that I can support this right. And I promise you, we take back Congress. We we will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. Okay, so now he's running for Congress. He is. Send me to Congress, everybody. What? what? Not only is that ridiculous that he's not running for Congress, and he's, you know, obviously is the day after the State of the Union is toasted, clearly still. Yeah. But beyond that, he says, we're going to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land. No, you're not. You need 60 votes in the Senate. Nobody is passing a ban on abortion, and nobody is passing abortion into law on a federal level. It's not happening. So anytime he says that, again, another one of those things that's that's a straight up lie. He knows it's not true. He knows he's never going to get 60 votes for that on either side. Right. So Which it's not I happening. do have to say, Nikki Haley did answer that very fairly. She's yeah. the one that put it out there like, there's not going to be enough votes for either side for this issue on a federal level. Right. So right. just wake up and stop believing well, no, either side on that. Right. And it's the and it's the states. Well, there's only one side that's running on it, but the the states make those choices now, and and they've been made. So so now we're getting to the ads. So but you're right though. The okay, day after. Sorry, you crazy. have to show that. You no, have no, to show that. Sorry. Okay, uh, okay, go to the ads. No, I will say. Too. I will say Biden's first ad, which again he's going to have a ton of money behind these ads. Yeah. So anyone who watches these ads and thinks, oh, no one's going to see this or believe it or whatever, Biden's got a ton of money. Okay, so don't undersell what this does. Now, this ad was a decent ad for him. Now, some of it's ridiculous, and we'll point that out. But but listen to the ad, and, and overall, this is as good an ad as he can possibly run. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices. Caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. Okay. Good so, ad if you believe anything that that guy actually says. Well, which it, three quarters of it is complete garbage. Well, no, fair enough. And, and but this gets back to your point too. So he mentions abortion. Yeah, right? oh, it mentions yeah, let me abortion. Tell let me just but tell what you. do they show for the picture? A woman holding up a baby. Right. And they're talking about abortion. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's just like what? Okay, yeah. that's fine. And then strongest economy, you know, in the world. Most people are not going to believe that. And then when you're saying, hey, by the way, I got the infrastructure bill done, you're like, <laughs> okay. So again, but for him and what he has to play with because of his inability to handle most of these issues properly, that's what he has to run on. Okay. I mean, it's, I think it was a decent ad. He mentions that he's older. Okay. That's fine. Uh, that's not, that's not brushing aside the issue. Right. Clearly. It's not it's not a Reagan situation. It wasn't a Reagan joke situation. Well, and Reagan he, wasn't nearly as compromised either. Right. Com- completely. Yeah. OK, but let's get into what Trump's teams are doing. OK, well, this is a pack for. for right. This yeah. is a team. This behind is a him. pro-Trump pack. And, and, and this is one of the ads that they're running. This one much more hard hitting, a totally different category of ad. But but take a listen to this. Lake and Riley should have been able to go on a run. 
in broad daylight without being murdered by an illegal immigrant. But Joe Biden promised not to deport illegal immigrants. Should that person be deported? That person should not be the focus of deportation. Biden vowed not to detain illegal immigrants who cross the border. No one, no one would be put in jail while waiting for their hearing. So when Jose Ibarra crossed into America illegally, he was not deported. He was not put in jail. Biden also supported sanctuary cities. Should undocumented immigrants arrested by local police be turned over to immigration officials? No. So when Jose Ibarra was arrested in New York City for endangering a child, he was freed a second time. Ibarra went to Georgia, where he beat Lake and Riley to death. How many more killers has Biden set free? Okay. Building America's future. Very, I mean, sometimes you wonder if PACs can get it together. That was a solid, truthful ad. It was a vicious ad. Yeah. Because in the thing that makes the border issue so difficult for Biden is exactly what we've just pointed out. There is so much videotape of him saying the worst possible things in relation to this crisis, meaning that he completely is on the wrong side of every portion of it, that it's very hard for him to escape. So those issues are going to continue to batter him time after time after time because his own words are out there and they're very clear. And his own actions are out there and they're very clear. And that's what I don't understand. If people think, oh, no, I still like Biden more than Trump. Okay, whatever. If you're foolish enough to believe that he's taking this border seriously post-election, he's already shown us what he's going to do. He's flying them in. He's right. flying illegal people into our country undocumented. We have no idea of their criminal behavior, and we have no way to track them. You give them a cell phone and tell them to show up and for some court hearing in three to five years. Okay, that's what we're doing. Are we nuts? I mean, are people waking up at all about any of this? Oh, I think they very much are. And that's why the numbers are where they are. They Trump is up five way. points nationally. If Trump wins this election by five points nationally. It will be a blowout. But one more thing on the Trump front. Let's get to the Trump ad. Yeah. Right? And so Trump runs an ad. His is a little different. His goes after Biden in a little different way. And you need to watch this one. So if you're just listening, you should tur turn it on on our YouTube channel and watch this ad because it's more visual than yeah, it is it audio. Is. It is. So you'll you'll hear the audio at the beginning. They take Biden's new ad, right? They clip the front portion of it, and then they start showing Biden, well, falling all over himself. Right. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. And he's falling up the stairs. He's falling at the Air Force Academy. And he's just basically looking confused and, and falling, falling off, off his, his bike. bike. And so, he's shaking nobody's hand. It's yep. like a ghost out there on the stage. And then he turns to the back of the stage. Uh, so kisses something. I don't know, the microphone. Uh, it's just all the errors that he's just. And then here's, here's one more little thing at the end. Listen to this. Anyway. Okay. And then it ends with Trump, Trump right. signage. So, uh, yeah, just showing him that he's just, he just has reached the point of no return in his age to be running the country, the United States. Now, I'm sorry. So, but, but this, but for a lot of people, and, and I think a, a lot of people on both sides of the aisle, this is going to be a long, long, brutal campaign. One that I think people would rather not relive oh, again. Oh, it's just a long election. This is going to feel like the longest election cycle. Because it is. Because there's no, because, yeah. It's Cause, so long. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> it will. Okay, so we're going to end with something something uh, very joyful. This. Okay, this is yes, your deal. This, this is, is my is your deal. deal. Go ahead. Mark thought that this would be too hard for us to share because her it's a little girl and she's really upset because her mom has said that she can't go to the, quote, pub with her. She's six years old. She's got makeup on. She's gone in the bathroom, put makeup on, and her mom's recording her. She has a pretty strong British accent. Yeah, she's so you, cute. So it's very she's funny. adorable. So if you have to listen, if you can watch this one on YouTube, I would highly advise this one. But I think I want this little girl. So go ahead and play this, Ava. Six. And Millie thinks she got to go to the pub for her daddy's birthday party. And did I get to go? No. Well then, why do I not get to go to the cat and? Spend time with my auntie. It's my weekend off. What about if other kids are going? Please, I just one night. One night and I won't go to the bingo anymore. I won't go to the bingo tomorrow. Okay, I'm trying to go to Ida. Yeah, but I don't care. I'm just asking you. What did Daddy say to all this? He's ignoring me. He's on his phone. It's me. 
You are? He's giving out to me. He's shouting at me. I'm trying to talk to him. Maybe because you're doing his head in. I'm not doing his head in. I'm trying to tell him something and he's being mean to me. All the time when you're gone, he thinks he gets his own way and everything. He thinks that he can he can go on his phone and he thinks that I, he doesn't have to spend time with me and he thinks that he pretends he's cleaning when you're gone. And he doesn't really clean me. He come, I go into the kitchen because I'm hungry and then he's on his phone and says, I'm cleaning. I said, no, you're not. You're on your phone. <laughs> No, you're not. You're on your phone. (laughs) Seriously. Guys, you believe me. I'm six and my own mother won't let me go to the pub. (laughs) My own mother won't let me go to the pub. (laughs) I think she is adorable. I mean, she's fiery. She did throw her uh, dad under the bus. And I wish her future husband all the luck in the world because watch out. She's not going to get away with anything. But anyway, just I like her fire. Yes. I think she's just telling it like it is. Yep. And I always appreciate that. So (laughs) it was good. It was very good. Okay. um, On Thursday, we are going to have uh, Paul Horvath from Orchard Global coming in to talk about the economy. Now, he's from New Mexico and he he runs a pretty big uh, organization in in Orchard Global. And and he is the guy to ask about the economy. So we're going to talk to him about what that looks like and what's maybe headed our way. So he's been talking a lot about, you know, what could, you know, what does the next two years look like? You know, what could we be looking at? So we'll do, we'll do that as well. Okay. Well, you guys have a great start to your week, and uh, we'll see you back here on Thursday. You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It Podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It Podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.